Hello everybody. In the last session, we were discussing about the DC generator and uh, looked at how one could excite the DC generator with various forms of excitation methods. That is the permanent magnet method, the separately excited excitation method, shunt excitation, uh, excitation method and one more method, the compound excitation method which we have still not discussed. Of course, we will re revisit the excitation concept after discussion on the equivalent circuit of the generator. So, we first discuss on the equivalent circuit of the generator and then we will follow it up again with the uh, different types of excitation methods, its pluses and minuses, benefits and uh, disadvantages and uh, how they can be corrected. So, coming back again to the DC generator, the generation of the field that is the flux okay, or the excitation is a function of the field current that is provided, the field current in the electromagnetic poles that we saw in the last session that the uh, electromagnetic poles uh, can, can obtain the field current either from a separate source, then it is called a separately excited machine or it can be taken from the uh, generated EMF, then it is called a shunt or self excited machine. Now, if we look at the graph of the I f versus the flux, as the I f increases, so this I f is actually trying to provide the MMF. the ampere turns by which we are trying to get a flux curve which is like this. After some time, if you further give more field current, the flux tends to saturate. So, the flux, the per unit values can vary from 0 to let us say this is 1 per unit or 100 percent let us say and this could be somewhere around 1.25 per unit <coughs> or 125 percent. Now, to reach 100 percent, let us say you need 1 amp of current and if you further increase the currents, the flux that is provided, that is produced is not proportional as it was in the, it is not uh, having the uh, same, for the same change in current, you will not get the same change in the flux at the output. So, as you still further increase the current somewhere here, to produce some change in the flux here, you need to have a very large change in the current here because the slope here is very small. So, you need to produce a very large change in current to produce even a small change in flux here then we say that these are the saturation zones. One should operate the machine just up to the knee point, this is called the knee, just up to the knee point. And it is not advisable to operate beyond the knee point because then the currents drawn will be much higher 
and therefore again I square R losses will be higher. Now this flux is used for obtaining the generated voltage across the brushes and which is given by P n phi z by 60. So out of this for a given machine this is a constant of course this is a constant value the number total number of conductors for a given machine is a constant and for a given speed of rotation E g is proportional to the flux. So now if we if we now plot the generated EMF E g versus the field current I f it will be more or less same because each is proportional to phi you will get a curve which is more or less looking like the phi versus I f curve. So your rated voltage should be somewhere around the knee point and this should be your E g rated and this would be the rated field current that you apply. So beyond the rated field current the, uh, the generated EMF does not increase very much for uh, changes in the field current. So this, this is called the saturation curve this is called the voltage saturation curve and this is called the flux saturation curve and this happens even at no load. So low, this has load has uh, not much role to play in this, this is just obtained by the amount of field current that flows. Uh, through the field coils to obtain the flux phi, the main primary flux phi. And now there is, there are two non-idealities that will come into the, uh, come into play while we are talking of equivalence. We will represent the commutator and the brush like that and we will represent the shaft like this. Now this shaft is connected to a prime mover and from the brushes, from the brushes, the machine is connected to an external circuit which contains the electrical load. So this would be the electrical equivalent of this DC generator. So this is the DC generator, so the armature, the conductors in the armature, the poles, all those things are contained within the circle and the commutator. There is the brushes which link the magnetic portion of the DC generator to the electrical portion of the circuit and there is a shaft which is coming out of the generator which is connected to the armature and that is linked to the prime mover and here is the mechanical source and you have a mechanical interface goes into the magnetic domain and then you have the electrical load.
Now this wire through the brushes lead through into the coils of the armature. So therefore, there are two non-idealities that can come into play. One is <coughs> the armature, the armature winding, winding resistance and that is called Ra. Now there is another second imperfection that can come or non-ideality that can come. One is the armature winding reactance. Both these are coming in series and we call that one as La, the inductance La. Note that the machine is DC and but whereas the uh, coils inside C A C. So therefore, the rea there is a reactance which comes into play with the motor. But these reactants come into play whenever there is a change on the electrical side. If on the electrical side the voltage is DC, the current is DC, there is no dynamics involved and the reactance component is uh, not coming to the picture because omega is 0, omega L is equal to 0. But whenever there is any step change in the load, whenever there is a change in the excitation, whenever there is a change in the generated EMF, any change is going to cause L di by dt and that counter EMF or that L di by dt portion is going to lead to a dynamic situation and during those conditions LA will come to play a role. So therefore, the equivalent circuit will contain two components, one is the RA and the other is the LA, the armature reactance, the armature inductance. Of course, the armature inductance will come into play only during dynamics. So this is going to come into play only during dynamics and when we are writing the dynamic model, we will try to consider the LA. And when we are talking of the steady state model, during steady state omega La is equal to 0. So, we do not normally consider those uh, La effect, the reactive effect and therefore, for the steady state we just consider the DC machine in the following fashion. We have the brush. So, always we show the brush like this. The machine itself is shown as a circle is the DC generator and then there is a shaft which is moved by a prime mover. The brushes are connected to the load but there is an imperfection which has to come into the picture that is the RA for the steady state. And then the load is connected across the terminals of the generator. So, this is E, we will call this one as E, E naught and what is actually generated here, we will call this one as E generated E G and this resistance is R A. So, there is going to be some current I which flows through this. So, what is E naught? The actual voltage that is coming across the load 
will be eg minus i into re and this is the equation which gives you the load regulation portion so as the current here increases and why should the current there increase if the load here increases so the load here increases the current here increases and as the current here decre decreases uh, increases the i r a drop here increases thereby the effective voltage across the load across the terminals of the generator will be e g minus i r a which will be less than e g by the amount of the drop across the series resistance r a which is the armature winding resistance. Now e g is the generated e m f which is given by p n phi z by 60 minus i r a that is e naught. So, this equation gives a picture of how the actual terminal voltage along with the non-ideality R A is related with the fluxes and the speed of rotation in of the machine. Now, if you plot if you plot E naught versus I f, what would one obtain? Now, we saw in the previous graph here, E g and I f are given by this voltage saturation curve. So, whatever a value of E naught which you will get here is again basically given something which looks like the E g curve. So, this would be the E g curve minus the load component. And that load component is going to determine E naught. So, this is going to be your E naught. So, your actual E naught curve across the terminals of the generator will be lesser than the E g curve. And with respect to I, we have the voltage regulation curve, I is the load, this is the load and you have E naught. So, when the load is 0 here, no load resistance connected, E naught will be same as E g as is evident from this equation here when i is 0 it is and then as the load increases. So, if this were e g let us say it is constant by some means and as the load increases e naught starts dipping and that dip is i into r a drop. So, it is not constant with different loads, what comes at the terminals of the generator is not constant with respect to uh, the load because of the non-ideality R A, there is a I R A drop. So, now that we have an understanding of the equivalent circuit, the non-ideal equivalent circuit, we will now revisit the excitation, the excitation issue. We have now here a motor, the shaft. Now let us have a, let us have a small shaft. Uh, 
and we have the brush. with the brushes connected to the external circuit. This is the terminals of the generator. Now in between we need to add this non-ideality and that is RA, the steady state non-ideality RA. So what you get here is E0. And what you have here is EG. Okay. <coughs> and there is one more thing, there is a field coil. Now this field coil is the coil that is wound on the field poles to generate the flux phi. Now this field coil has to have a current to provide the excitation that is it has to have a field current IF. Now this field current IF can be obtained by a separate let us say source it can be obtained by a separate source as shown here. So this is going to provide you IF. So at different IFs one obtains different possible voltage EG. Now there is a rheostat here which can be used for adjusting the IF and based on that particular value of IF the, the amount of EG that is produced will be determined by, by this characteristic. Depending upon the IF the amount of EG that is going to be uh, obtainable will be determined. So if we provide an IF which is let us say within the knee, so let us say this is the IF that one provides, IF, the EG that one can get is this and for a given load the E0 that one can get is this, the remaining goes into the IA or a drop. Now this is a separately excited DC generator. The separately excited DC generator that we discussed in the previous class. The other generator that we were saying the shunt generator. Now the shunt generator is obtained by connecting the field terminals to the terminals of the generator here itself. So which means we select this, we copy that go to the next page and paste it here. So what do we do here? This we break. The source is no longer a separate excitation. We give it from the terminals of the generator like that. It is from E0. So E0 by E0 by whatever this R, let us say this is RF will be IF. So IF which is equal to E0 by RF. Where 
which determines the which determines the field current and therefore the flux now this is a shunt excited dc generator shunt excited dc generator so under load what happens so under load e not is equal to eg minus i r a so then the i f the field current will be e g minus i r a by r f which is equal to e g by r f minus i into r a by r f. So, the field current has two portions one is a portion which is actually dependent on the generated EMF, EMF and another is a portion which is basically the non-ideality. So, in practice as R A is finite the field current is going to vary with the load. So, the variation in the load is going to cause a variation in I f which means the flux here. Now, the flux is directly also going to affect E g which is going to affect your regulation. Therefore, the regulation in the shunt machine is going to be much poorer. So, with the load let us say you have uh, 15 percent variation or 15 to 20 percent variation in E naught from no load to full load sorry from no load to full load in the case of a shunt excited DC generator and in the case of separately excited it will be less than 10 percent for the case of separately excited excited machine. This is because in the case of separately excited machine the excitation voltage is constant and therefore, I f is constant independent of the load and therefore, that is not going to cause further fluctuation in E g whereas, here there is a bootstrap effect change in change in the load I is going to affect I f which is going to affect E g which is going to affect E naught and therefore, I f this will cause a much poorer regulation. Now, to take care of this to take care of this we use the compound excitation so now let us paste this so we use the compound excitation to take care of the load fluctuations due to the shunt the self excited now the shunt excitation is also called self excited because the excitation is taken from the same machine rather than from a different source <coughs> So, what do we do for a compound? What do we do for a compound excitation? Excitation. So, in this compound excitation, we have the shunt field shunt field winding we also have a series field winding a 
a series field winding. The idea is very simple. That is, we have this which is connected across the generated EMF, and there is also a series winding. Let us introduce a series winding. as shown here. Now this will have less number of turns because the current here is pretty high is the load current that is flowing through the series field winding. So this will be the series field winding and this will be the shunt field winding. Now in the case of the shunt field winding, the flux is proportional to I f which is given by E g by R f minus I R a by R f. So this flux is going to vary with the load. Now there is going to be also another flux provided within the uh, machine due to the series field and that is proportional to the armature current I itself. So the, uh, the series field, this is the shunt field and let us say the series field will be proportional to load current itself. So if we make the effective flux will be phi shunt plus phi series vectorially which would be E g by R f minus I R a by R f plus phi series which is a function of the load current. So if the number of windings on the series field is so designed such that the series field cancels out the load component of the shunt field, then this will become 0, then your actual field will be just equal to E g by R f like in the case of a separately excited DC machine. So that is the function of the series field. So because we are having the series and the shunt field together, it is called the compound, it is called the compound excitation or the compound generator, compound generator. So internally the connection will look something like this. So let us say we have we have the two poles, let us have the armature commutator all represented within in that circle and let us have this. We have the brush. as shown here, we have actually E g generated between the brushes. Now, <coughs> now from this brush we are taking because there is internally R a from this brush let us have first the shunt field winding. So the shunt field winding goes like that, like that, so on. Then it goes to the other pole and let us wind it. We 
we take it and connect it to the other brush. So, we have this connection here. So, through this is flowing IF. Of course, we need to provide a rheostat here. So, let me provide a rheostat there. So, we have RF which can set the value of the field current to the required amount. So, through these you have the IF which is flowing, IF flows through this direction, it flows like that, flows in these directions and then flows here flows in this direction. Note the direction of the IF, so they all are heading field. Now, we connect, so this is the, this is the shunt field. We also need to connect the series field, which means through the load. So, let us have the load component taken from again from the brush. So, before the from before it is given to the load actual load terminal let us make some windings on that. Let us make some windings on that. let it go to the load and then from here it will go here and goes to the negative portion of the brush. So, again here the direction we see the current direction flowing in here, it comes in there, goes like that, goes like that here, goes into this fashion. So, these are aiding fluxes which will try to cancel out the load component of the uh, shunt this one due to the armature winding resistance. So, this is how the series field is put into the picture, this is our load and this is current I, whereas this was I F. So, if the number of turns here is so designed such that it cancel out, cancels out the load component of the shunt field winding uh, flux, then the flux in the flux in the machine will be a constant which will be dependent only on E g uh, uh, like in the case of the separately excited machine. So, this is a compound machine. Now, we saw earlier that if we have a plot of E naught versus I, the load, at 0 load this is E g. As the load increases, there is a droop there is a droop in E naught and that is equivalent to I into R A, that is equivalent to I into R A. Now, if we, if we give a field that is just that much in excess, let us say for example, we take E g versus I f or we take E g versus flux, E g versus flux in the machine. So, this has a curve which goes like that and then droops 
because there is no change in the flux further it saturates. This is a function of I f. So, E naught is equal to E g minus I r a. Now, if the flux, let us say at this flux phi 1, we get some value of E g, let us say E g 1. At a slightly higher flux, we will get E g 2 and if this E g 2 compensates for the I r drop, then the output voltage E naught will be the value E g itself because the flux has now increased with the increased load. So, which means E naught equals P n phi z by 60 minus I into R a. Now, this will be equal to P n z by 60, this is a constant, phi is proportional to uh, I f. So, I will we can put it as a constant into I f minus I into R a or we can say P n z by 60 phi in the case of a compound, in the case of a compound winding or compound excitation is E g by R f minus I R a by R f plus series winding, the series flux. So, which would be E g by R f minus I R a by R f plus flux series winding which is function of the load current minus I R e. So, which means now all this let me call this one as k. So, we have k E g by R f or uh, we will we will call we will call it as k1 eg rf is also taken into the constant minus k2 i plus phi s e which is a function of load current with k3 K3 the series field which is a function of load current minus I R e. This is going to be your E naught. Now, if we choose this, if we choose this such that it can take care of both the load component of the flux, shunt field flux and the load component of the drop, then we have K 1 E g minus I K 2 plus R a plus K 3 series field which is a function of load. So, if K 3 and the number of turns is so designed such that it will cancel out this portion makes it equal to 0. So, if the shunt field winding number of turns and K 3 is so designed such that the load component of the flux and the load component of the drop R A is equal to 0, then E naught will be 
directly proportional to or all uh, equal to the eg eg portion such conditions we will have e not e not which is constant at eg whatever may be the load i now such a uh, compound generator is called a over compound that is a few more turns are added extra to compensate for the voltage drop uh, of the armature winding resistance then it is called a over compound generator there is one more compounding effect which is the differential compound generator in the case of the differential compound generator the series field winding is reversed so it has a sense which is reversed so let me take this portion for explaining copy paste so in the differential compound this winding of the series field is reversed in sense so what it means is that we try to we try to make the current flow in the reverse direction in the field so that it has a cancelling effect like that and so also here it has a cancelling effect so that the current in the series field for the field is you see reversed with respect to the shunt field so therefore this is going to provide a cancelling mf so what happens is that when we have with load e not so as the load increases the equation that we wrote here as the load increases the flux increases much faster with load so this portion is not plus this portion here is minus so which means what you actually get in the compo differential compound is that the effective flux is equal to phi shunt minus phi series which is a function of load so which is eg which is proportional to eg which is proportional to eg by rf minus k i into r a by r f minus phi series which is a function of load so as the load increases this also reduces the flux the series also reduces the flux and it drops pretty drastically so as the load drops the induced emf is all, as the flux drops the induced emf also drops drastically so the voltage with load drops quite drastically here this is generally used in applications where with load you want to limit the current such that the short circuit limit the short circuiting current if the load is very high like in the case of dc arc welding applications 
there you use a generator which is differential compound so that as the load increases there is a sharp drop in the voltage uh, to limit the short circuiting current. So, this gives an idea of the different excitations that we have that we can use for a DC machine. The permanent magnet excitation, the separately excited excitation, the shunt excitation, then the compound excitation where you have the normal compound to take care of the loading effect, the shunt excitation, then you have the over compound to take care of the loading effect on the field plus also the loading effect of the uh, armature winding resistance on the output uh, terminal voltage then of course the differential compound so that you want to bring down the output voltage drastically to limit the short circuit current in some of the applications like uh, the DC arc welding. So, if we look at a comparative graph of that versus the E naught for different types of uh, the excitations at 0 load we have let us say E g So, in the case of a compound you will see more or less a constant voltage for as the load varies in the in the case of the compound that is one of the best in the case of regulation. And the case of the over compound there will be a generation let, let, let us let us plot in terms of uh, E g so that which generates slightly higher with increase that is with increasing load so that it compensates for the I R A drop and this is the over compound. And then in the case of the uh, separately excited machine E naught with the load the E naught value will dip. Let us say this is the uh, separately excited. excitation and if you have the shunt excitation it is slightly poorer than separate excitation this is the shunt excitation excitation and then the regulation is very bad in the case of differential excitation but we want to have a bad regulation in this case differential excitation. Okay. So, this would give you a, a relative figure of uh, comparison a relative picture of the comparison between uh, of the voltage regulation characteristics of the various um, excitation methods that have been used for the DC machine or the DC generator. Now, there is one final topic that we need to cover. Uh, and that is the dynamic model of the DC generator. So, we saw that in the case of the DC machine we have the shaft which is of course, linked to some prime mover. There is the brushes. and these brushes are connected to the external circuit, but in the meantime there is two non idealities that we need to include. One is the armature winding resistance and the other is the armature winding reactance and then of course, the final load. This would be your 
eg of course you have the load rl which is connected here rl and due to the rl there is a current i which is flowing in so this is the dc generator now here the sha on this side on the mechanical domain side on the mechanical domain side there is a prime mover which is providing the torque to rotate the shaft to produce the voltage generated uh, emf which is being generated sorry we need to correct this this is not the generated this is the output e not this is the output e not eg is generated at this point okay this is the terminal voltage and this is rotating at a speed omega and that is being passed into the dc gen and comes out as e not into i as the so if there is absolutely no loss t into omega watts goes through the generator comes out here as e not into i now eg is p n phi z by 60 so for a given machine this is fixed this is let us say fixed for a given excitation total number of currents uh, conductors in the armature is fixed and of course this is a constant so therefore eg is proportional to the speed of rotation n or eg is proportional to the omega in radians per second or eg is equal to some k into omega so the generated emf is dependent on omega here proportional to omega here and the constant of proportionality k is dependent on the machine this is probably sometimes provided as a name plate value now you see that the potential variable eg is now dependent on the flow variable or the kinetic variable of the mechanical side so this is a gyrator so which means that t is proportional to the load i because we saw that the load i is going to give an opposing torque on the mechanical side by the lorentz force because the lorentz force and the torque has to overcome that opposing torque which has to be proportional to i and t will be equal to the same k into i which is provided in the name plate okay so these two are the connecting links between the mechanical and the electrical side so based on this we have two dynamic elements one is la the other is the shaft whatever the reflected inertia j there is an ra and there could we could also take the friction b the inertia with these we can find the state equations for the dc machine we will evolve the state equation for the dc machine dc generator in the next class and then continue with the dc motor thank you for now